Once you make this, you're really gonna think, why don't I do this more often? Because it is so delicious, it's unpretentious, it's affordable, it's easy, and why not? When it comes to fish and chips, you can cook that. Let's get cooking. I'm actually gonna start with the potatoes because I'm only gonna use one frying pot, so we don't want our oil to go ahead and taste like fish, so I'm gonna get the potato started and then we'll move on to the fish. For the potato, I'm using just a plain old russet potato. As you know, these make perfect french fries from that potato video, and they're really affordable. I'm also gonna double fry these potatoes, just like a chef would, which means we're going to kind of blanch them in oil first, drain them, and then fry them again. So what you're left with is a super tender potato and fluffy on the inside and crispy on the outside. I like about this kind of shape. So the way I get that is by taking your potato and cutting it into slices that are about half inch thick, and then cut your sticks on the diagonal so that they're nice and wide. Whether or not you peel your potato is up to you. I'm gonna do a little half and half. No rules here. Once my fries are finished, I'm gonna keep them hot in a warm oven, set on a wire rack. This is gonna keep them from getting soggy. So you wanna go ahead and have that ready. Time for the first fry. So you want your oil at about 275 to 300. A candy thermometer is gonna help you keep your temperature right while you're going through this process. So I definitely recommend investing in one of these. You also wanna cook these potatoes in batches because you can't crowd the oil or nothing will happen. We're gonna do this for about five minutes. You want them to pretty much be cooked through. Just stir them occasionally. We don't want any browning to happen right here. We just want them to tenderize. All right, it's been about five minutes or so and these potatoes are nice and tender, but you can see they're not brown yet. So we're gonna drain them, let them cool and crank the heat up on our oil. So I'm ready to crisp them up. At this point, my oil is about at 375, 380. Time to fry. And if we're gonna be truly authentic, finish these off with some good sea salt. This Maldon sea salt is my favorite and it happens to be from the UK. Let's talk about the perfect accompaniments for fish and chips because if we can't create the perfect bite, then what's the point? First off, malt vinegar. Okay, this just on the fries alone is the best thing ever. Now, I know there are some haters, but if you have not tried it, don't knock it. Also, tartar sauce. Okay, you've gotta have a good tartar sauce. I personally don't love a sweet tartar sauce, so I'm gonna show you one that's got a little more kick. I'm gonna start by finely mincing just a little bit of an onion, and then I'm gonna add in some dill pickle. If you like a sweeter tartar sauce, you could sub in sweet relish here. I'm going a step further and putting a little fresh herb in there. The base of tartar sauce is, of course, mayonnaise, so just what you have in your fridge is fine. I'm gonna add in some lemon because fish plus lemon equals delicious. And a little hot sauce. You do whatever you want, salt and pepper's just enough. When it comes to the fish, you want a nice, firm, white fish. So I'm using cod today. Haddock is nice, or you can splurge and do something like halibut. So we're gonna make a batter. Couple key things to remember when you're making a good beer batter is that first of all, you want your ingredients to be really cold. A good cold batter is going to perform better. We're going to scoop out our flour and then set it in the freezer for a little bit. Also, Baking powder. Baking powder is our secret ingredient for that airy breading, okay? This isn't like a breadcrumb breading that like sticks right to the fish. We wanna have little pockets of air. This is gonna just make it extra crispy and delicious. To add extra crispiness even more, I'm gonna stir in some rice flour. If you don't have this, you could use cornstarch and get that same effect, but this is just gonna lighten it up even more. So I've got a few fish fillets right here, but I'm gonna cut them in half even more so that they can be little like strips. It's almost like one giant fish stick of glory. All right, now we can't just go straight for, with the fish to the batter. You have to coat the fish a little bit to give the batter something to stick to. So I'm gonna go in with some more of that rice flour or cornstarch and a little bit more flour. I'm gonna salt and pepper in this step. That might be against the recipe, but I can do what I want. You just want a super light coating here. Dust off any excess. All right, now that our flour is nice and cold, I'm gonna add an ice cold beer. Beer goes well while cooking the fish and chips and also afterwards. Just like a thick pancake batter. You need to have a station set up because this is gonna happen fairly quickly. 
You wanna be able to enjoy this meal right after you prepare it because no one's ever liked soggy fish. Go straight from the batter into the oil. Already see how it's bubbling up. Our fish is done. It's perfect. It's going to be so light and airy and crispy and flaky in the middle. Oh, and don't worry if your house smells like fish. I'm gonna show you how to remedy that as well. All right, now it's time to serve it up. I've got our fries that have been in the oven. If you listen carefully, you can see they're still crispy. What I think could be so fun is just to lay out some newspapers on your kitchen table and serve it up. Trust me, that's what I wanted at my rehearsal dinner. But I'm just gonna take it up one level by getting some wire baskets and just put down some paper. It is good to have some paper because there is gonna be some residual grease from frying and we wanna kinda absorb that so it doesn't just stick on our plate. So whether or not you use just parchment paper or paper towels or newspaper, it's a good idea. This is such a fun spread for spring, summer. It's a great Friday night dinner as far as I'm concerned. A little bit of malt vinegar on the fries and the fish and a little dip of tartar sauce. Listen for the crunch, AKA perfect bite. Here we go. Mmm. 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 better than wine and cheese. Once you make this, you're really gonna think, why don't I do this more often? I know that's exactly the thought going through my head right now because it is so delicious, it's unpretentious, it's affordable, it's easy, and why not? When it comes to fish and chips, you can cook that. As promised, how are we gonna get rid of that fish smell? Remember when people would come over during the holidays and you fill a little pot with some cinnamon sticks, maybe some cloves, orange peel? You could do that. Or you could simply heat up some water with some vinegar, a good amount of vinegar. Somehow it just cancels out that fishy smell. Your house isn't smelling like vinegar. It's just curing the area. Got all the solutions. Um, like, um, like, strips, like, um, like, strips, like, um, like, one giant fish stick of glory.